Distribution provided by Cloud Sigma, the cloud that adapts to you. Visit cloudsigma.com slash thisweekend for a free $200 credit. This Week in Web Design is brought to you by Harvest Time Tracking. Easily track time on your projects and invoice your clients. Start your free 30-day trial by going to thisweekend.com slash harvest. Today, how do I prepare files for web developer? Ari and I are going to work to prepare the files for the This Week in Network redesign or design to deliver to Josh Vickers, our WordPress developer. If you're a designer and you want to know how to prepare your files so that they're not a big mess, stick around and watch us work. Bienvenidos al episodio número 45 de esta semana para el diseño de la red. Jesus, is that it's the right way longer, of saying it? Yeah. Diseño web design. How do you say web design in Spanish? Uh, you guys can tell me on YouTube how do you say web design in Spanish or how you prefer it. I am your host, Jose Caballet, Chief Education Officer of the school. Joining me as always, Freelance Creative Director, directly from Venezuela, Aureliano Guimon. Always great to be here. Um, today we're going to answer this question, which is really important, how to prepare files for web developer. A lot of you have asked that question. Um, last week we talked about responsive design. This week we're continuing uh, on the network, uh, on the website that we actually worked on last year. This year we're actually doing it. Um, and it, you know, this show, for those of you guys who are always in a hurry and want to get to the tutorial, look, I'm going to do it really fast, but this show is not another tutorial show. We're like the daily show for web designers. We help you accelerate your web design career by sharing you with you creative business technology and marketing secrets from our guest experts. If you're a student, this show is great for you. If you're a freelancer, this show is great for you. If you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to build a web business, this show is great for you. And if you're a career switcher, going from one career to another, this show is great for you. Excellent, I just spilled my water. Really nice. If you're looking for tutorials, Here's some people that you can actually get some awesome tutorials on the same topic from, whether it's Linda or whether it's Team Treehouse or HowInteractive.com. Those are really great resources for you. Check them out. Today we're going to jump right in to doing what we're doing, and we're going to talk about getting files ready. And we have Tatiana, who's a designer, who's also part of our team here at the network, and she has this question since you're beginning to learn web design, which is awesome, to have a live audience. We should have a Definitely. live audience we next should, year. Like applause. Yeah, like Tatiana, you, sh you should clap from off of the side. No, come on. Let's see if you can hear come applause. On, yeah. There you go. That's one person in the audience. Mm -hmm. But no, I'm serious about next year having multiple people in the we audience. We should do it. That'd be awesome. We've talked about it. We talked about it? No, we're going to do it. We're reformatting the show. So, Ari, how are you? Good, good. Good to be here. We haven't seen each other in many weeks. Yes. Even though I'm wearing the same shirt I wore. Actually, if you. Well, m people catch that when they say, you're wearing the same shirt, dude. Uh -oh. Like, who's paying attention? Hey. All right, so let's talk about delivering f files. And, you know, the big question is, how do I do it so that the developer uh, gets a clean file? In the f episode we did with Josh, he talked about the mistakes that designers make, one of them being delivering an InDesign. So that's a really big thing, done delivering an InDesign. So Photoshop is what we're going to, Adobe Photoshop is what we're delivering. And today, what are the best practices that you feel are important, Ari? I think Photoshop is very important. I mean, I think it's the tool of preference for a lot of des uh, developers. Um, it's kind of industry standard. Um, like we mentioned in the last show, you know, some of them will, are a little bit more tolerant with uh, Illustrator files, but some of them are not. Some of them are not. So, you know, I mean, if you're a designer that's going to be doing this for a living, you might want to just kind of... You know, just standardize. Just get in the, yeah. And most people are most people that are going to be watching our show are going to be cool with having it be in Photoshop. But you know, my experience has been that one of the things that developer you know do unto others as you want you know them to right. do unto you, like the golden rule: don't, don't deliver really messy, well, like, messed yeah. up files. And don't deliver like an InDesign file that you're going to have to redo in Photoshop. Or a anyway. messy Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop right. file. They just want to get ready to start. That's exactly their interest right. is what where are the graphics? But let's talk about things like sizes for a basic uh, for a basic web page, what, what size should my Photoshop file be? Um, the dimensions usually range anywhere between, you know, 980 wide by however many tall, and that's based on that 12 column grid that we've mm -hmm. talked about a lot. Can we show um, that? Do you have it in another file? You know, I'll um, talk about that a little bit. I think I actually do have it somewhere. Yeah, I actually And it's have not in a, the file that we're working on because I haven't I actually you know, traced go back it in to there, too. Because oh, you did? You dropped it in? Yeah, I can't yeah, work so without you, the... You can't yeah. work without it. So explain that. Here's one for Inkai, one that we did, Latin yeah. America. Explain that to Tatiana. Why does that grid need to be in there? Um, it's, it, I think it's you know consistency and layout between the pages, I think, is really important, making sure things don't shift. Um, you know, And just uh, in general, for placement of things, you know, just to 
make sure that, you know, like you might align something against, you know, like the left of your grid on one page. And if you go to the other well, one, talk, talk into the mic. Yeah, oh, sorry, sorry about that. She's there. And, um, but yeah, I mean, I think just for consistency between pages, it's good. And also for placement, you know, so once you're used to working with this grid, you'll know that it can, um, it can subdivide a number of different ways. You know, you're going to have things that span the full width of the page, like these heroes, um, and you can have things that are kind of like... So that's a really good thing to talk about there, because w something that I really hate, 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 is when designers deliver the page right at 980, and yeah. they don't show what it oh, looks like open. Yeah. So you are allowed to make the document size wider than you are. the grid what, yeah. Yes, yes. Definitely. But what you want to show is the instances. How does it look in an instance? So uh, people think of it as a page, you know, it's 980 wide, that's what it should be. That's but exactly the reality right. is that your browser will open, especially now on retina displays, you know, websites are going to get done smaller and smaller. And it's a, it's a basic understanding of the difference between, you know, uh, bit depth and, and resolution. Right. So this is a huge issue uh, because people don't understand this issue of bit, de or bit density. So you could have, I'm not going to explain that. So if you do, you have a second, why don't you Google uh, the difference between uh, what resolution is, like uh, my file needs to be 72 DPI. Uh, so that's 72 dots per inch, which we're using like a, a, an old school kind of dots, it's not really pixels. But a point in uh, measurement, like, you know, in type one point, it's actually equivalent to one pixel. They're actually the same exact size. That's exactly uh, so right. eight point type is like eight pixel type. And and you mentioned something really important, which is states. Um, I think people really get caught up in designing the one page, but they're not thinking about you know what yeah. happens if you open it rollovers up. or if you open it up. You know, so in the case of this file that I have here, um, what happens? What's what's the content like for you know this top area when it starts to rotate, right? So well, you, how big is the image? How, how wide is, is it going to be up you know? in the background? And, and, I and you hate can't leave it one. to developers to like just guess what that image is going to be. You have to give it to them. Well, so. look at that design. And, 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 and if you guys bring up my screen, Jesse, if you bring up my screen, I have the Hulu site up. So here's a really great example of states. When I narrow my browser down, um, and I actually have the user profiles for the This Weekend Network uh, that we did last. Actually, we did it a while ago. So these are the users for the This Weekend Network. Actually, I ADD'd out there. Let me go back to this. Um, you notice how the state actually changes. What does changes? it look like when it gets wider? What it does actually it look scales. Like when it gets little and it's on a phone. It's yeah. pretty badass. This actually scales, and even the, yeah, the internal content, look at that, it scales. Like the, so the this the is columns. kind of fluid. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's not responsive because it isn't scaling down to mobile, and it doesn't need to. And if you guys watched last week's episode on responsive design, we talked about the difference between responsive design and uh, and mobile, and like what, what uh, how, how is it different? What else, Ari? What are other things that we need um, to? I think that making sure that your file is pretty organized is key. So let's know. talk about that. Let's work on that. Um, something that I always do, and you know, you can pull this example, and I also started doing it in the This Weekend, is just to divide things by components. You know, So you have that top header area is all in one layer set. So okay. I can turn it on and off. So the header? Um, you know, there's the footer. All in one thing. Oh, all in one layer set. You know, uh, all so layer like, set, you know how to use layer sets at Tana, right? Okay. So, so I, header, footer, and a layer set? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that's, I mean, you know, it, it's always, it's the best thing to do, right? Otherwise, you know, you risk upsetting whoever you're working with, or, you know, you they'll get a bad impression of you. This person's really messy, whatnot, you know. Um, anything that kind of hovers over, you know, so we had this kind of interesting nav that's in a separate layer. So interactive so, states. Interactive states. So just everything, try to think of this thing not as a static page, but as a flow. And then all the things that pertain to this page, all these components like hovers or whatever, try to put them in layer sets. Um, and you can hide them, but you can also highlight them. So you'll notice what I did here. You made the, them into a color, yeah. Yeah, I made them into a color, you know, so you know that you can like toggle between those three, you know, and that's something that you can talk to developers about, you know, like when you open my file, you'll notice some layer sets that are color coded like this. That means X, that means Y. So just making sure that... Um, they can come back to you with the least amount of questions possible. That's always good. You know, it, it saves time. Um, I always think about it like the busier you are, the more thorough you want to be because when you throw it over the fence or when you're working with someone, if you don't cross all the T's and dot all the I's, it's going to come back to you and there are going to be all these questions and, you know. So, so that brings up the really interesting issue. And Tatiana, tell me what you think about this because one of the things that, again, it's common sense, a lot of it, it's, it's what are the other concerns you have? I mean, in terms of, um, uh, uh, in terms of um, 
you know, how to prepare things. Yeah. Does that mean there's a different setup? Yeah. Different there usually is. There usually is. And and when you work with for different um kind of dis like pixel densities on display, what you want to do is you want to work on the largest version possible because you can't scale up in pixels, right? So you work on the largest one. And then usually my preference is to have somebody either on the dev side or a good production resource to kind of bridge that gap between you and the developer. So you create the art and then you hand it to somebody who's going to do in the case of iPhone for example or even web you know who's going to do all that slicing or reducing down to to a smaller size um, in the case of you know creating native apps for iPhone you do have to hand off two different types of graphics like all the buttons need to be retina display and then the old style display if you're doing for example Android you need to account for that as well you know so I, I when I worked with Seth a while back um, you needed to account for Android dimensions. For Android, so I would hand off like four different types of, you know, so it's like the the 200%, which is Retina, the 100, which is what they called like the regular iPhone, then there's like 150% of original size, which was one Android, and then the, it was just like, right. it was a lot of stuff, so... It is a little bit overwhelming, so I think for me as the designer, I would love to really get that kind of information from the developer. Definitely. Well, but but there's something that's interesting, and, and I'm doing it right now as we speak, and that I tell the designers all the time. All this information is available on Google. So so what I do, uh, you know, like if you're about to talk to a developer, uh, and this is an instance where you do do the research. Like I, I told a few episodes ago, I told Josh, you know, that you know it's kind of annoying when people come in to a doctor with you know all the and research all the answers, done and all right. the answers. Uh, but in the case scenario of how to design for, so if let's say you're collaborating on a project with a team, a de an internal development team, I think it's okay to ask them, hey, what size do you guys want things? That's exactly but there's right. a certain degree, like the Developers are very, um, since they're dorky, um, they're about the details. The minute that there is an argument for not asking that uh, such basic questions, and then there's two arguments. There's like, you should admit what you don't know. That's actually the best thing to That's do, be authentic. Do. That's yeah. one. But then there's the other argument, which is, if you do understand that you're losing leverage and that, you know, they're like, oh shit, this person's, this guy doesn't know what this person's doing. new. Right. So what's the right thing to do? Something like how big should the iPhone dimensions be for a screen to design? You can download can the iPhone SDK. The, yeah, totally. So there's, there's a there's software development of resources kit. on the web, you know, and I think we have an episode about mobile actually true. from last year where That's we actually exactly designed right. for mobile and we showed the grid and we did the whole thing. All that stuff is available online. So here's a question for you. Is it an issue that you want to hear it from someone? Because I've had this phenomenon happen with, with, with depending on your Fido profile, uh, which, by the way, if people are wondering when I'm calling people dorky and when I'm calling people evil, if I'm out of my mind and I'm just being really rude. But if you go to online here, go to my screen. If you go to Fido.SchoolOS, which is S-K-O-O-L-O-S dot com, it'll tell you whether you're evil, dorky, or uh, flaky. Um, which a lot of you know from the school as your behavioral assessments, and that's the way I can gauge uh, interest. You know, developers are dorky. They're interested in the details and in the technical things that work. Uh, designers who are dorky, flaky, or flaky, dorky will research it and know exactly the dimensions. You're actually flaky evil, so you're more interested in it. You, you're interested on, uh, on the control, making sure everything is right. Less doing the research, even though, no, that's not true. You do a lot of research. I do. Ah. It's a little bit confusing. So I do do my research, but then I... It's too much information. Yeah. You want val one more validation one point. More validation yeah. I want to know exactly how I could do it to save myself time and not having to... Got it. Got it. So if you guys didn't hear that because uh, Tatiana's not mic'd, which I know a lot of you are going to complain on YouTube, uh, thank you for being interested and 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 thank and, you and say, thank you for complaining. I actually like the complaints. That's my favorite thing. That's how you make it better. That's how you make it better. You you guys make the show better. Uh, her question was, you know, that yeah, she finds too much stuff, and that she would like that extra validation point, which of course this show gives you guys, so that you don't have to rework. 
you don't have to do it a million times, which is perfect. Um, but the point I was making is that 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 it, a lot of it is available, and the, and you are right. Actually, I didn't consider that, which is crap. All right. So what, if we keep on going, you know, I'm going to go back and reemphasize your point. And I have a screen on my, I have a page on my screen which I wanted. Um, and I know you, you, Tatiana, if you want, you can scoot forward so that you can see it from here, even if you kind of sneak into in camera. Um, and you and you'll have to rewatch the episode anyway. Um, but um, the, so I have my grid up at the top. Uh, this is for the launch festival. Uh, bring your chair up to Ari's. You can bring your chair up to Ari's. Yeah, there you go. To Ari's height, yeah, if you want. So you can see it. That's fine. That you're in your winter jacket. Um, that was a suggestion from from uh, from people out there. Uh, so so the point that 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 I was making is that here I have my grid, and then I actually did everything and in the exact order that it appears. This is a one-page design. So. You know, I don't know anything mysterious that you know somebody else not doesn't know, other than the fact that I've been doing this for a long time, and I want to make sure that the, that the developer, you know, doesn't actually. This was delivered to PSD to HTML, which is even more interesting because I wanted to clean it to somebody that I've never even seen. So top jump links. This is exactly what was up at the top. Top hero area. Judges. Quotes and carousels. Those are my layers. And and, and since I have limited control of color. I actually try to color code it to the colors, to some degree, not really, but like orange, orange, there is no purple, so I made the gray, pur there's no gray, oh, actually there is gray, um, but whatever, the point is that- A lot of it is common sense. A lot of it is it? just common sense, yeah. you know, so here's a carousel, you know, there's the rollovers right above the arrows themselves, the picture of George Zachary, who was a judge, the white outline, the shadow, so they don't really care about all those things being in there, developers aren't going to care. But they do care about the ability to do something like this. So like to pick up the, the, the text mm -hmm. because they want to be able to do that. I used to in the past divide the text from the rest of the graphics um, in that order. Now I don't because it doesn't really matter. I know, that, I know that developers have told me that it doesn't matter. But that's all I did. It was just put everything. Look, if you turn it off, the test should be if you turn it off, it's turning it off progressively. Look at that, in actual order, Jesus. And also, for me, I'm working a million miles an hour. It really helps me um, figure things out, because if, if I don't do this, then I go back to the files. It's really messy, and it's kind of, I get confused. I actually, this, I was working with this with another designer. I was actually working with Michelle, who's, who, who produces a lot of our content, or all our content. And she, she's awesome, and she worked very fast on it, and she handed it over to me. Before I even continued working on it, I went through and I cleaned all the files. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Like it's like a, an artist cleaning all their tools, getting them ready, ready to go. I find that I work, okay. I work much more. How can I say? Like precisely and in, in, in a much more organized way, and make things look better when all my folders are nicely structured. Because you're being clean about it, you're being diligent, as opposed to when things are kind of all over the place. Which is sometimes what happens when you're kind of like taking a very quick first pass at it, but you always want to take a step back and just say... Yeah, that's a good just, question and a good yeah. point. Like when, like the file that I gave you for the This Weekend Network uh, redesign, here's my version of it, and it's, I'm curious. It's super messy. Totally, I, I cleaned mean, it up. I totally I just, let's see how you clean it up. Let's see your... I gave you my quick comp and check you I out. I just put like all the shows, like show one, show two... You know, all the shows are in there. Here's all the navigation elements. There weren't a lot of layers, but even without that many layers, I just kind of wanted to go in there and sort of separate them so that I could, when I started creating another file, when I started working on this second one, I just drag that up. Let me see, where is it? Oh, you drag your layer sets over. That's smart. I just drag the layer sets And Michelle over. made a comment, you know, on the teleprompter. She said it's it's like a kitchen prep giving to a chef. So like the prep chef being exactly really kind of right. clean on with it. And, and if you've been in a kitchen or, you know, cooking is a great metaphor for building websites. I remember being in Thomas Keller's uh, website and go, uh, not website. We did Thomas Keller from the French Laundry, they, their websites many years ago, many moons ago. And uh, we also got to visit and eat at the restaurants. Um, but uh, I also went to train. Uh, for for them and I and I and I got to see you know their training, which is pretty amazing. And and if you watch kitchen shows like Master Chef and you get the chefs yelling at the cooks about you know cleaning their workspace, I do the same thing to like designers and interns at the group where I used to do that where it was like, hello, clean up your goddamn files. Totally, I can't see the uh. totally. Yeah. Anyway, keep on going. No, then you get yelled at. You get yell, I, but I don't yell like you know Gordon Ramsay. I pulled up this file. You remember we used to do this as well, which Ooh, was like yeah. Well, this is important. Talk about this. Why would we do this? So this is um, you know, this is when you're being really thorough, and you know, you give this to the developer, and 
you know, when they build it, then you have to go through a visual QA phase, and then you're like, well, you know, can you make the logo a little bit more, like, separate from the top? They don't understand what that means. They want numbers, right? So when you hand it off to them, and then they give it back to you, and then you're like, well, you know, I told you that there was uh, 20 pixels between the logo and the top of the page, and it looks like there's 40. So can you, you know, just kind of adjust... So it, it kind of like makes the dialogue a little bit easier, you know, because you're talking to them in numbers and not in kind of abstract kind of, can you make it a little bit closer or a little bit bigger? So I think that's kind of something important. And we used to do this a lot. And you'll notice here, I even added, you know, some information about the CSS that you could potentially use to create some of these containers. Here at the bottom, you go through, and these are actual tags in HTML, so an H1, H2. So going through each one and um, saying like what the font is and what the size is. And developers love this because they can actually start coding a style sheet by just looking at this without necessarily like looking at the design and trying to reinterpret what you're saying into HTML tags, right? Like they already know the header that we're using up here, you know, is this size, is this color. They can just code that right off the bat. Like they can create the style sheet first and then work on the HTML. Um, so I think that's good. And then one last thing on this uh, file is just the states on the, there's something that we do sometimes as well, is just create like a grid of, you know, kind of like an inactive, what does a button look like when you're not doing anything, when you hover over it, and you know, if it's turned on or turned off, and just give different states there, because you can't assume that they'll know, you know, I mean, then they might create something that you don't like. And then again, it goes back to the least amount of work that you can do later on, the better, right? The least amount of, and the, the easier that you can make the dialogue when it comes time to like visually QA the site, when you're kind of looking at what they did and you're making these minor adjustments, you can always refer back to this and say, hey, remember that file I sent you and those measurements, make sure it's exactly this. And, and when you do a hover, make sure it's exactly, it looks like that or, you know. Um, so a little bit more work up front saves you a lot of headaches. Later yeah. on. This is great. This is very, very helpful to see. Actually. That's great. That's yeah. great. And, and I'll give you even one uh, interesting example here. And, and this is working with a print designer. And uh, for Edible Schoolyard, which we did a few years ago, or actually we did last, last 2000, year. Was it 2011? Yeah. Uh, 2012. Uh, we're in 2012 right now. So in yeah, 2011. 2011 yeah. So first of all, the design uh, partner for this project that was chosen by the client, uh, Green uh, Dragon, uh, which is a um, uh, pretty amazing design firm and, and pretty prolific uh, and, and amazing designers. Um, so they gave me this for the for the um, for the splash page, um, which I think it looks fine, right? It's cool, but it, the challenge was that it wasn't necessarily formatted in any way for um, for um, for the web, and you know things like this was a little too light, and um, down here, if you look at the white area and yellow text, that just wasn't going to work uh, for web, and also it wasn't on the grid. So you know, and I explained it to them, and we went on, we got on the phone, and we kind of went through the grid. So, and and this is a PDF; it's not the 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 final Illustrator file or the final. Uh, and then in this case, we delivered the Illustrator file um, to the developer, and they were fine with it. It was uh, to um, to Stoffer. But um, the point that I did is here, and this is not the final, final file, but I just took and I tried to replicate their kind of asymmetric, you know, kind of funky called Medina, you know, uh, design uh, aesthetic, which again, you know, it's a team from CalArts, uh, you know, they're pretty awesome, they do pretty interesting work, but not necessarily used to the formatting for the web. So I tried to maintain some order inside the, the funkiness. Uh, so I took it from there to something like this. And, and, and the final splash page was something like this. So the other thing I was doing too was I was trying to highlight what you wanted the customer to, or the user to read first. So here it's hard to tell what to read first, right? It's like, where do I start? Donate now, join me. So notice that I actually made join biggest because that's really what I wanted the user to do. So a lot of it is common sense, mm -hmm. and it's where design and functionality. And I just noticed when you were showing the style guide for uh, uh, for a Seth's project, you know, I realized that designing for the web is about designing for variability. Mm -hmm. You have infinite variability. So the only thing that you can really do is put together systems that kind of shorthand what the possibilities are. Does that make sense? That's exactly so right. if the button's going to be here, here's the distance. If uh, you know, if it's going to roll over, it's going to be this color. Because when you put it together, you know, the developer is going to have the final like assembly, and without instructions or without guidelines or 
parameters, you'll be disappointed. Right. So what ends up happening a lot is that two things. One, the designer has, uh, if it's a designer-driven project or even the client, so the dork, if the flakies and the evils have control, and they go to a developer, A, they're going to do, they're going to way over scope, meaning they're going to have way too much they do want to do in too short of a time, and the designer's not going to have enough definition of what that might be. So when you give it over to the developer, it's going to be a lot less. The, 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 you're not going to get all the features you want, and it's not going to look the way you want it to be. And that's what I hear people all the time pulling their hair out that my web developer didn't make it look like what I wanted it to, and it doesn't work how I want it to. I'm going to tell you a secret. It's your fucking fault. Totally. It's not the developer's fault. It's you. Well, okay, your developer could suck, so there is the possibility of that. But keep in mind, you they're know. speaking a different language. You just said You're it. You're totally speaking yeah. a different like language. We're thinking, you know, gradients and transparencies. They're thinking numbers, and you have to give them numbers, right? So if you do like a cool overlap with a gradient, tell them like how much to set that alpha value. Or terms that they can understand. Yeah, understand their language. The best thing that you could do is actually go take a development class. I mean, take a weekend development class somewhere just to know basics. That's what I did. When I was at Razorfish, I was a creative director. I mean, I, 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 at Art Center, I took classes, and I actually was lucky. The person who was my teacher was Linda Weinman from lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com, if uh, you guys, it's one of our sponsors. Um, and uh, I actually had her teaching me HTML, mm -hmm. which is kind of crazy. And she wrote a bunch of books. Uh, but now you can go to lynda.com and take a class. Learn the basics. If you're not a dorky flaky or if you're not you know, planning on developing full time, I wouldn't right. necessarily invest so much Just time into it. But know yeah. enough. And then your best friend should be a developer. Right. And don't do like, like Ari. Ari is my best friend, and we you know go. we we we've known Buddy. each other for a long time. Um, but uh, the thing is, the, but that's actually a really good point. I mean, the, and and the worst thing that I've seen is, um, and I've done this a couple times, and with Seth once, where you know creatives go off on this whole thing, blah, 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 and you and can then, get cranky and you yell at them, and then and, no, and then you hand oh. it off to development, and they're like. Yeah, we can't build that. <laughs> so yeah, you designed for a long time. Well, but no, there's also the other. Okay, so you give it to them and they can't build it. But there's also the developer getting upset at you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and 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 then you've gotten upset at me, yeah, totally. especially late at night when you're like, oh, you're can you do tired. this? Can you go? And you're tired. You're like, oh no, I can't oh do it. God. So that's the other thing. You can also forgive each other. But anyway, but um. Is this helpful so far? Yes, absolutely. What else? What else in terms? And we need to actually work on delivering the files for the for the for the network website. What do you think of the new network design, by the way? It definitely looks um, cleaner mm -hmm. and more organized. I thought looking at the old one, it was a little bit busy. There was some repetition going on mm. with the words. Yeah. Um, I like the font that you chose. And also look with the colors is calmer. It's hmm. not so jumping at me. So Yeah, I like that it doesn't have that 3D glossy stuff going on anymore. Yeah, I mean, and a lot of people have been. So one of the things to really look at and I'm looking at for the network is I, I've been working here at the network for a long time now. So, hey, that's actually really cool. This is from an event I was at a few days ago or a few weeks ago. Um, so I really understand the dynamics of the business and what we need to do. And I'm working progressively with, you know, Jason DeMant to improve our delivery to our sponsors. Um, so... As a designer, I'm actually, I have the tendency, and you know this well, Ari, to play both the evil um, role, even though I'm not evil, that's not my profile, um, um, I, the business role, and the um, and the um, and the design role at the same time. So, what is the strategic goal? And the strategic goal ultimately for us is to make the network look higher quality to make it look tight, so that. And I told this to Jason, the man, in one of our sponsorship calls, is like. Tight is price of entry, meaning tight is baseline. Success goes after tight. Like you can't, and, and Jason uh, Calacanis had a great episode about this. And actually, no, he wrote an amazing blog post about excellence. And if you've read the book Good mm -hmm. to Great, et cetera, and a lot of those, and a lot of you who follow the show and, and do stuff, so, you know, Joe Bolton, for example, just bring up Joe Bolton because I know you're going to be watching this, Joe. Badass, the stuff he's doing. Yeah. The, the, the quality of the work he's doing for his business is actually pretty amazing, and it's pretty impressive what you guys can do if you watch this show. So anything else you want to add in conclusion, Ari? Because I want to talk about, yeah, I, I mean, want to do some promotional stuff. And this is something I want to be that, evil. Um, that I hear about a lot with people that I work with is that as the barrier to entry gets lower for technology, the more you're going to have to raise the bar in terms of UX and UI, and things are just going to have to look better. And if you look at the things that are out there now, I mean, you can't get away with doing 
schlock stuff. So we're actually at a transition point in the history of online business and in the history of what's happening. And um, you have to look good. And user experience is going to be the future. So if you're interested in a career in web design, if you and you know you know we have Full Sail University as a sponsor, you know you know what we talk about. This is actually and a lot of people will say parents might be like, ah, not a good idea. Believe, hear me now. Believe me later. What we do, this thing right here, where it is, here, is actually web design is actually becoming and it's going to become more important. And the user experience and our ability to collaborate. And the reason why I do this every week is because I know that that we are hitting a threshold where even the smallest business, even the smallest mom and pop shop, has to be super tight, which is a both an opportunity for designers, but also an opportunity for businesses. So let me show one last quick thing on my screen. So in, in addition to this, we're also going to be doing the motion graphics for the network. And the whole concept, just so that you know, the concept pitch, so that people know, is that this week in, I'm emphasizing, and this came out of the uh, strategy that we did last year, I'm emphasizing the idea of inside. So you're getting an insider's view into web design, an insider's view into startups. So you're actually inside the little blue dot or inside a, the box, which is funny because people talk about outside the box. You know, we're actually inside the box. Are you in? Hey, stick around for, and then, you know, that animation that you see at the beginning of our shows where you see all the kind of shows come up with that sound. We're also redoing that, and we're going to be doing that with um, uh, our team in 3D uh, with some of our guest experts that we've had in the past. So I want to talk a little bit about a couple of things. You know, there's a webinar that we have coming up on November 8th, and it's really about tools to manage the process of web design. So if you bring up that title card for me, Simple Tools to Manage Complex Web Projects is a free, it's a step-by-step -step guide. Join us. It's one hour. Uh, I'm going to really cover a lot of pretty exciting stuff and uh, go into detail about what are the tools that you need to manage complex web projects. This is from the school, again, This Week in Web Design is a show on the This Week in Network, which you see us redesigning. Um, and I'm actually going to redesign the This Week in Web Design identity so that it doesn't look like the school so much. Uh, uh, and the school is what I'm doing for a living nowadays, which is teaching you guys, you know, simple tools to manage complex web projects. And you can join us for the school live every Thursday. The subscription's 75 bucks still, you know, and I'm actually going to bring the price up to probably about 100, 120 dollars because you're learning from me every week live. So kind of, it's kind of badass. I've had multiple people say to me that they dropped out of their graduate programs or that their school was, you know, they're paying, you know, thousands of dollars per 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 actually unit, I think, you know, one class is a couple of thousand dollars, uh, and that they learn more from watching the show and from joining the school. So it's a pretty dang, you know, inexpensive solution to learning a lot from people who have a lot of experience, and we're going to be introducing new teachers next year. Um, I want to thank Harvest again, um, and I also want to thank Media Temple. Uh, Media Temple very specifically because they sponsored uh, my tour that I did recently, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, uh, I'm talking about uh, the awesomeness that was uh, all the conferences that I, I, I think I'm pretty tired still from it, but uh, a few weeks ago uh, we were at uh, in Santa Cruz doing tech raising. You can follow along on a day-to-day -day basis. I actually post, this is tied to my phone and to my Instagram, so you see, you can basically follow along. There's another workshop that I did uh, here in LA, uh, a filter, which was an amazing and fun workshop. Oh, hey, what's that? That's one of our workshop attendees. Actually, that's my nephew, who I still have to meet because I came back to a workshop. Anyway, so follow along on uh, my Tumblr, Jose caballero.tumblr.com. You guys can see all these but goodies. Look at that. That's me in stock. That's crazy. I'm big in Japan, apparently, because that's in Japan. Uh, anyway, so join that and also take the Fido test, actually. That's really funny. Um, Fido.theschoolos if you want to know if you're evil. Fido.theschoolos. School, school Fido.schoolos.com. Um, it's up here. If you, you'll be, barely will be able to see it. Um, what else, Michelle? Um, I think that that that's it. Um, uh, well, let's thank Harvest, and can you bring up the credits uh, for the team who puts the show together? Ari, uh, thank you for joining us always. Uh, Jason Calacanis, who's the boss, who owns the network. Myself, uh, Ari Brandis Payne, who I called Candace the other day, which is awful. Uh, Jesse Mills, who is actually an alumni of uh, Full Sail. Uh, Michelle Wong, who is amazing, and she produces design slices and dices. Sophia, who makes sure that we're all in the right place, and Jennifer, who does our makeup. And thank you for joining us, Tatiana, today, and helping 
helping us uh, get the show kind of underway. Did you learn anything? Here's the yes, thing. Yes, I did. Thank you so much. Was this helpful? I really appreciate it, yes. Okay, you awesome. You should get a permanent seat there, and you, you can you, get one of these giant mics. Yeah, you should get these giant mics. That would be funny. I'll be back. <laughs> I'll be back. <laughs> I just said that's Arnold. So thank you guys again. Join us every week at 2.30 uh, uh, Pacific. Here's a little graphic with one of our puppets. Uh, and uh, also 5.30 Eastern uh, PDT. Also, please like us on Facebook and like us on uh, the, tw or not like us on the Twitters, follow us on the Twitters. All the links are below on the Facebooks and on the Google Pluses, which I need to figure out the Google Pluses better and use them more. Um, links to Ari's uh, face, uh, um, Twitter are down and links to all the resources that we covered on the show, like Linda and like uh, Full Sail and et cetera, are all downstairs. Harvest, make sure you go check it out, thisweekend.com slash harvest. This week, I'm sorry, this weekend. Is that right? Is that the URL? Am I saying it right? Thisweekend.com slash harvest. Yeah, thisweekend.com slash harvest. And it's a free trial. You don't have to put in a credit card. It tracks your time and it invoices your clients. Isn't that awesome? You can just automate that whole process on your mobile and also on your desktop. It's pretty damn awesome. And it's one of the better looking, if not the best looking solution for this. Check them out. It helps us out to pay our bills. So we'll see you next week when you watch us work.